Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I'm lucky enough to have both the new 2020 MacBook Air and also the new iPad Pro 12.9. I've reviewed them both individually, and I'll leave links at the end of the video if you want to find out more. But the question is, if you have about a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars to spend, and you have your heart set on a new Apple device, which one of these two should you actually buy? To be honest, it's a surprisingly tough call, although I bet right now as you're watching this, you already have a gut feeling towards one or the other. But let's see if I can change your mind. So first of all, price, and this won't take long because they actually cost the same. $999, the same in pounds for the MacBook Air, and the same price for the iPad Pro, although in the UK it's actually 30 pounds cheaper, but near enough, exactly the same money. Of course, you can always get the smaller 11-inch iPad Pro, which I must admit I do prefer. It's more comfortable to hold and carry around, plus it costs 200 less. But I think for this video, given the similar screen size and price, the bigger one is a fairer comparison. But that's just the start. For the MacBook Air, I'd recommend you pay 100 more and get the i5 processor. It's a more powerful quad-core chip rather than the base dual-core i3, which is fine, but if you're gonna be using this for the next few years, I think it's worth the upgrade. As for the iPad, I'd suggest the keyboard folio, which I've got here, which also acts as a case, and that's 200. And then if you want the pencil, that's another 120. But obviously it depends on what you're using it for, so in a way it's nice that you can pick and choose. So I think realistically, we're looking at about 1100 for the MacBook Air, and between 11 and 13 for the iPad Pro, and of course a little bit more as well if you want the LTE option. And also, considering the Magic Keyboard is coming out in May and will cost 350 for this one, that's an awful lot of money. So straight away, I think I'm leaning slightly towards the MacBook Air in terms of value for money. I get it's not exactly cheap, and there's lots of cheaper Windows alternatives, but you know, between the two, maybe a little bit more bang for your buck here. Okay, next question. What's new with these 2020 models, and which one is the bigger upgrade? Well, the short answer is the MacBook Air. We get much more powerful 10th gen Intel processors. These new chips also come with faster Intel Iris Plus graphics, and we get double the base storage, 256 gigs up from 128. Along with a much improved keyboard, it's the same one as the latest MacBook Pro 16, as well as things like faster RAM and Bluetooth 5. In my full review, I found that versus the 2019 model, the processor was on average 27% faster, and the graphics are whopping 61% faster. And that was testing with this i3 model, the cheapest one. It'll be even higher on the i5 or the i7. So it's a very solid upgrade. Whereas the iPad Pro is a little bit less exciting. Coming from the 2018-19 model, we now get the A12Z chip, which is near enough exactly the same as the previous A12X, but with one more graphics core unlocked. It's basically a 7.5% boost in graphics. I mean, every little helps, but most of us won't really see any difference. More importantly though, Apple also doubled the base storage option, 128 versus 64. We also get Wi-Fi 6, something the MacBook Air misses out on for some reason, and a new camera setup with an ultra-wide lens and a LiDAR sensor, which is basically a time-of-flight sensor for measuring depth. And while more apps are coming, right now, pretty much only Apple's measure app makes use of it. I think if I'm being honest, the biggest upgrade here is the fact that they've doubled the storage to 128 because it means that I think for most people, you can get away with buying the cheapest model. So with the price and what's new in mind, let's talk about pros and cons. Starting with the design, and while I know not everyone loves the iPad's somewhat industrial aesthetic, it definitely looks and feels more next gen. It's slimmer, lighter, with thinner bezels, and so we get a much higher screen to body ratio. And the way Bluetooth keyboards just seamlessly connect and with the Apple Pencil you can just pop it on the top and then it magnetically clicks to it and then wirelessly charges, it's all very seamless and futuristic. And I can't wait for the Magic Keyboard that'll bring full trackpad support, backlit keyboard and a second USB-C for pass-through charging. Then of course we get the cameras on the back, which I'll come back to in a second, and also quad speakers, which sound awesome. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Jap, and I've been driving the Tesla Model 3 around London for a week. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Jap, and I've been driving the Tesla Model 3 around London for a week, including the places I probably shouldn't have. Including the places I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> The MacBook Air, on the other hand, is still a gorgeous looking laptop, and actually, while I've always been a sort of space grey fan, and I must admit this gold colour is actually growing on me, it's a beautiful looking laptop, and I think while maybe it's not as futuristic in terms of, you know, the bezels a little bit thicker and 
overall it's slightly less compact. It's incredibly well made and I think it has a kind of timeless design quality to it. Plus the huge trackpad and the new scissor mechanism keyboard are I think the best combo on any laptop right now aside from maybe the bigger MacBook Pro 16. The Air also wins in terms of ports. We get a 3.5mm headphone jack, which we don't on the iPad, as well as two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. And so with this, you can actually uh, connect up to either two 4K external monitors if you want, or a single 6K display. And you have the option to connect an external graphics card or eGPU uh, if you want some more graphical horsepower. Although, to be honest, I'm not sure how many people actually do that, and it would probably be significantly bottlenecked by the processor in this. So yes, you'll need an adapter for most accessories, but there's plenty to choose from and assuming you don't forget to bring it with you, it's not a big deal. Whereas the iPad just has a single USB-C port. And while recent iPad OS updates mean you can now connect SD cards and external storage, obviously via a USB-C adapter, and then move things around with the Files app, to me at least, it still doesn't feel as versatile or easy to navigate as it is on the MacBook with macOS Catalina and having a full desktop. But one area where the iPad kicks the MacBook's butt is, you might be able to tell just by looking at it, the displays. It's 50% brighter, up to 600 nits, 16% sharper, the viewing angles are better, and we get a much smoother 120Hz refresh rate, which is great for gaming, and just generally using apps feels more responsive. Don't get me wrong, the MacBook Air screen is still really, really nice, but I think if you know I had to choose and I was going to watch a movie or edit some photos in Lightroom, I'd probably choose the iPad. The only downside is the more squarish 3 by 4 aspect ratio means you do get bigger black bars or letterboxing when watching movies or shows. Now in terms of performance, well compared to the dual core i3 model of the MacBook that I have here, in Geekbench 5 the iPad does come out on top. However the quad core i5 or i7 laptop would certainly close the gap. But quite honestly, raw performance and specs doesn't really give you a proper idea of how they compare. It all comes down to how optimized the apps and the programs are. For example, I think the six gigs of RAM in the iPad is probably uh, better utilized than the eight gigs in the MacBook Air. And also in many cases, they're lighter scaled down versions of their full desktop counterparts. I mean, no doubt the top spec MacBook Air with the i7 and 16 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte SSD, uh, this one tops out a one terabyte SSD, will be more powerful, but it just comes down to what programs you're gonna use. So let's talk about that, because for me, the biggest selling point of the iPad is the incredible App Store. It's the main reason it's dominated the tablet market for the past 10 years. There's an iPad optimized app for nearly everything you can think of, and in many cases is better than the web browser equivalent using Safari on the MacBook. I love how quickly I can digitally sign something or how nice the YouTube, Netflix, and Amazon video apps are, or the awesome drawing and design apps that use the pencil. And for whatever you can't find an app for, you still have Safari or Chrome. And actually using Sidecar, the iPad works as a great second screen for any MacBook. So even as a secondary device, it can still be very useful. However, as nice as the iPad ecosystem and UI is, if you want to code in Xcode or use Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro or run virtual machines or boot camp, or you know, have a full desktop and file system that's much more intuitive to navigate, or at least that I'm more used to, the MacBook Air does it all. It might not be as pretty or slick in some cases, but I think for Pro users, Mac OS and the fact that it uses Intel processors right now makes the MacBook Air more versatile. One advantage of the iPad, which we haven't really talked about yet, is the fact that we get this rear camera setup. It's using a main and an ultra wide lens, along with a new LiDAR sensor, which obviously, compared to the MacBook Air, doesn't really have anything on the back. Now, I'm not someone who tends to use their tablet cameras, but they are by far the best cameras on any tablet and aren't far off the iPhone 11 setup. Plus, I'm excited to see what developers can do with that LiDAR sensor. So I'm shooting this with the front cameras on both the iPad and the MacBook Air. Uh, essentially what you'd see in a FaceTime or a Zoom call. And actually just looking at the screens, I think it's fairly obvious which one is which and which is better. But I want to take this a step further and actually test this in the real world. So I'm going to make a call uh, to my friend Michael Josh from Gadget Match over Zoom with both and then see what his reaction is. Okay, MJ, so this, we're going to call it A. Uh, you're watching this feed and you're listening from that feed as well in the audio. Okay. So, and now everything is coming from this one, audio and video. It's clear that the audio, the video from B is way better than A. Brighter, the screen is, is warmer, the quality is, is much better. Take a screenshot and then I'll, you can see for yourself how it looks like on the other end. Thank you so much, Andrew. <laughs>
Back to work. Thank you. Bye. Stop slacking. <laughs> See you, mate. <laughs> the iPad also relies on face unlocking using the camera and the IR sensor, whereas the MacBook Air has a Touch ID fingerprint reader. As for battery life, they're pretty similar actually. With normal everyday use, I'm getting about seven hours on the MacBook, whereas the iPad is closer to eight. And I think chances are that you're running less intensive programs and probably not multitasking as much on the iPad. But battery is great on both, and it's not really a big enough reason to pick one over the other. All right, so I've been waffling for long enough. Let's get to the point. Which one should you buy? Well, I'm going to give you one of those annoying non-answers because I'm going to say it all comes down to how you're going to use it. But you know what? The truth is, I've had both of these lying around for the past couple of weeks, and I would say that 9 out of 10 times I've actually reached for the MacBook Air. Admittedly, I'm on lockdown, so if I wanted to watch something on my commute or on a flight, I'd probably get more use out of the iPad. It's really interesting, and actually Nilay over The Verge made a good point on The Verge podcast, which I definitely recommend you listen to, because he said the iPad's simplicity can actually sometimes make it more complicated. I mean, for basic tasks, it's great, but unlike a laptop that we're all used to, you have to learn the gestures, learn what works and doesn't work, whether you'll have the same functionality on an app versus the desktop version. And if you are happy to invest some time into it, really customize it, use Siri shortcuts and get to know it, then the iPad is a great choice and you will not be disappointed. But I think for me, based on my workflow, if I had a thousand pounds to spend and I had to go out and buy one of these myself right now, I think I would probably go for the MacBook Air. It's just a bit more practical for me. But what about you? Which would you go for, iPad Pro or MacBook Air? or none of the above. Let me know in the comments below. I really hope you found this video helpful, and if it was, then it'd be awesome if you could give me a little thumbs up below and maybe hit that subscribe button, all those YouTuber cliches. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.